Hi, it's Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. I have a fun June Taylor project today using a fusible fleece that's pre-printed with numbers so you can make this adorable pet placemat for your cat. I know when I have my cats, I, I love cats by the way, I, I wanted to have a cat on set with me today but I figured they'd wander around and you'd be more focused on the cat and not know what I was doing here. So um, just know if you're a cat lover like I am, this is just a fun project and if you have someone that loves cats, what a great gift this would be. This was so much fun to put together and so easy using June Taylor's product because when you get your kit, when you open up the package, you'll have a piece of pre-printed numbered fusible fleece. What I love about that fusible portion is it's going to automatically adhere to the back of my uh, little pet placemat with steam or with actually heat. So I don't have to use a spray based, which I would have to do with a batting. Um, so your kit will look like this and you're going to be ironing that to whatever backing fabric you're, ch you're choosing. We have this cute little kitty fabric. This is available as a kit. Um, because we didn't want to waste the fabric, and of course this whole thing is, is going to iron down, we went ahead right away and trimmed closer to the line, but now don't, don't cut right on that line. Um, not yet anyway, until you have that ironed down to your backing fabric. Now the scissors I'm using right here are the Clover Bordeaux 200s. This is a seven and three quarter inch scissor. I love this, it's great for left and right handed, which is very unique. Most scissors are uniquely designed for either right handed people or left handed people and Clover has some of the most innovative notions. They're designed and manufactured in Japan with just some of the smartest people who've really thought through all the things that are important to you and I as crafters, sewers, and quilters. And they really, they really set their products apart that way because they do think through, hey, you know what, there are people out there left-handed, my husband's left-handed, so he very much appreciates products that are um, considered for uh, the fact that he is left-handed. So once you have that roughly cut out, you'll iron that to whatever you want to have for your backing fabric. Now we again chose this little kitty fabric. It is directional. So if you're using directional fabric, just be aware of that. If you decide that this is the orientation you want with the tail to the left and the head of the fish to the, uh, this to the left and that to the right, you want to orient all your fabrics that way and also have the backing that way. So just wanted to call your attention to that if you happen to be using your own fabric and you wanted to be using um, directional fabric. So you iron that to your uh, backing fabric and then you would go ahead and cut out on the drawn line and that's what we've done ahead of time. And now we can just jump into laying these pieces out. So if you've never used a June Taylor product before, Everything is numbered, so it's telling you the order in which you'll paste, place the pieces. Piece number one, which I believe is our kitty fabric here, we'll just lay that right inside there. The instructions, of course, are telling you what size to cut the strips, what length to cut the strips, width and length, and you'll just lay that there. Now, piece two is here, piece three is here, four is here, and five is here. So you'd kind of just hop back and forth and build this kind of from the center out and then out here. So let's go to our very next piece, which is piece number two. And in this instance, you will just write sides together. And our goal is to fill that box. So when we flip that fabric over, we've completely covered that rectangle right there. I'm gonna put a pin in and let's take that to the sewing machine. I will be using the Bernina 770 today. I have the 57D. This is the dual feed presser foot. At least I have the ability to use a dual feed system, which is here on the Bernina. Um, this is one of my favorite features of this sewing machine is it's basically a way to have feed dogs on the top and the bottom. So if you have the Bernina and you have this feature, this is a time where I would use the 57D and engage that. Because you are going through a lot of layers, including a batting, actually a fusible fleece at this point, and it just helps feed things through evenly. If you don't have a Bernina or a dual feed system, you might want to be using a, um, a walking foot at this point. It'll accomplish the same thing. 
Now, because I have a section out here, it's really important I don't bleed into that section. I wanna start on my blue line that's horizontal here and not beyond that because now I'm infringing on that lane. So let me just scoot up a little bit and make sure I'm starting right there. And I'm gonna go needle down, make sure that I'm where I wanna be. Yes, I am, let's start. Similarly, I'm gonna make sure I stop at this blue horizontal line and I don't go beyond that. Let's do that. Now, one of the things about uh, when you iron a fusible fleece or a batting multiple times, sometimes it can shrink. For that reason, instead of using Instead of using the, an iron, I'm gonna use the Clover Roll and Press. So with the Roll and Press, I can get that seam nice and flat without heat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now your next piece is here, and it's the same process. You'll just, yep, it's absolutely there, right sides together, so your quarter inch and flip, Roll and Press, and you'll continue laying your pieces out once that's complete, you're going to be doing piece number 10. So let me, just, let me just get you to the stage where we have all of this portion done, and then I'll show you that, how we'll manage that portion. So you're, you're here like this. This is, the, we've done the rectangles, and now we're going to do the upper portion with the stripe. So just like before, figure out where you need to be. Right sides together, so your quarter inch seam allowance and flip. And that'll end up being right about like that. Same with this. Now this one for the top, if you're using our kit, these fabrics are directional, so make sure you have that oriented properly or your kitties might be upside down. So here, make sure you're checking that you're, you don't wanna start here or you're gonna miss it. So make sure you've adjusted that right sides together, pin, it'll start sewing here and where the, it just kinda drops off, that's that little scoop. Stop sewing and then pick it back up and sew there. And of course, you'll be doing the same thing down here. And I've done that ahead of time, so let me bring that out and show it to you. So here's what this looks like right now. And of course, we want our fish shape. So in order to see that, we're gonna flip our project over and we have that silhouette of the fish. And this is where I love to bring out my clover scissors. But you know what, before I actually do that, I wanna press out my seams even further. So good and flat, all the way. I haven't used this, the uh, iron until now, but now that everything is sewn down, I don't need to worry about any level distorting the fusible fleece. You bring that over. I love this um, clover wedge iron because it's just so little. And sometimes I like a bigger iron but for smaller projects, especially when I'm doing some applique, I love this. It's hot, really hot. Gets everything good and flat. And there's a flat sole on the bottom. It doesn't have those little steam. Um, so I don't have the little depressions that I sometimes get with irons that have those holes for the steam to come out. Okay, so as I was saying, we're going to use the silhouette of our fish and we're just gonna go ahead and trim around so that this excess fabric is gone. And then, as you would expect, let's look at that, look how cute this is. And you'll just continue to trim around your entire shape using a good pair of uh, scissors like the clovers here, and then you'll simply do a binding. Now, if you're not sure how to do binding, at the very end of this video will be the magic binding video. It's a, it's a technique that Tammy showed me. I love it, where you really can't really almost see where your binding begins and ends. So be sure to watch that if you're not sure how to complete your binding. And I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the pet placemat using the June Taylor pre-printed -print fusible fleece.